In this video, we will see how to implement the login functionality in our application by implementing the token-based authentication system using Spring Security and with the help of JSON Web Tokens. If you are not aware of what are JSON Web Tokens and why they are used, I suggest you to read about them at this link you see on the screen. And I will also add this link in the description section. So let's have a look at our authentication flow, how it would look like on the high level before we go and implement it. So first of all, we have a client who wants to log into our server. The client makes a login request to the server by providing the credentials. The server receives this information and validates the credentials. And if they are matching, it creates a JSON web token and sends this information back to the client. The client uses this token to authenticate itself for all the consecutive requests it's going to make to the server. So once the server receives a request with this token, it first validates this token, whether it's the same token which is generated by the server or not. And after the successful validation, it responds to the client with the required data. Before we dive in and start coding, I would like to take a moment and explain you how the authentication mechanism works in Spring Security. This is a high level uh, overview because there are also lots of uh, hidden uh, functionalities and hidden components uh, used in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this authentication mechanism. And uh, because we are implementing in uh, Spring using Spring Security, it is not so straightforward. If you are not clear what you're doing, it's very easy to get lost and confused. Okay, here is the diagram which shows us the high level flow which is followed inside our project. These are the main components we'll be using to create our authentication mechanism. The first thing is, of course, our auth service, which we will uh, receive, uh, which will receive the authentication request. And inside this auth service, we grab the username and password from the request and create a username password authentication token class. We will pass this class to an authentication manager, which takes care of all the authentication of which, which takes of authenticating our users. This authentication manager will use an interface called as user details service which can fetch the user details from multiple sources. In our use case, it would be database. If the user details are incorrect, we get an exception at this stage. And if they are correct, the user details are passed on to authentication manager, which returns an authentication object back to the auth service. So at this moment, our authentication is successful. So as you see in the previous diagram, we will create a JWT and send it back to the user as a response. So this is a bit in-depth uh, explanation of the authentication flow. I hope it is clear for you. Uh, without any further delay, let's start coding. All right, so the first thing we need to do is to update our security config class. We have to create our authentication manager. For that, Spring uses a class called as authentication manager builder. So, so let's configure this. For that, let's create a method public void configure global. And now let's inject the authentication manager builder to this method using method injection. We can do that by adding authentication manager builder object as input and adding auto wide annotation on top of this method. Inside this method, now we can use the authentication manager builder. And in, for this uh, object, we have a method user details service. This method takes input of type user details service. The, we have saw so we saw what the, this user detail service does in the previous uh, in the previous diagram. So it mainly uh, loads the user data from different sources. In our case, it would be database and provides the user data to Spring. So as this is an interface, we have to create an implementation class. So let's create a class called as user details service impl, which implements the user details service interface. Now inside this class, let's override the load user by username method. This method takes the username as input and returns the user details object. Let me quickly paste the logic we are going to use in this method. So first of all, we are querying the user repository to retrieve the user based on the username. If the user does not exist, we throw a username not found exception. This is the exception which is provided by Spring. And with that user object, we create another object, which is like a wrapper uh, with the same name user. This, cl this class is provided by Spring Framework, which implements the user details interface. Um, and here we are just mapping the user details to this user class. 
And lastly, we are providing an authority called as simple granted authority for a role called user. So now we have the core part of the user authentication. Let's create the logic where we receive the request from the client. So for that, let's open the auth controller class. And here let's create a new endpoint with a post mapping with value as slash login. Let's create a method by the name of login. And to this method, we'll pass an object of type login request. So this is the same DTO. Uh, this is a similar DTO we used for register for, for a registration functionality called as register request. And uh, let's create this lo login request class. And this class contains mainly two fields, a username and a password. And let's also add the necessary Lombok uh, annotations, uh, namely data, all aux constructor and no aux constructor. Now let's go back to auth controller and type auth service dot login and pass the login request object as input to this method. Let's create this method inside auth service. Now what we need to do here is to implement the logic to authenticate the user. As we saw in the diagram minutes ago, the auth service contains the logic to create username password authentication token and use authentication manager to perform login. To do that, first we have to auto wire authentication manager into the auth service class. If you read the documentation for authentication manager, we can observe that this is an interface. And for an interface, if we do not mention explicitly what kind of bean to create, Spring throws an exception because there are multiple implementations of authentication manager. So we have to create a bean inside our security config, which extends the web security configurer adapter. So let's do that. So whenever we auto wire authentication manager, Spring finds this bean and injects it into our class. Now let us continue the implementation. Inside the auth service class, let's type authentication manager dot authentication. And here we are going to pass an object of type username password authentication token by typing new username password authentication token and passing the username and password from the login request object as the constructor arguments. Okay, so let's go back to our diagram and see where we are. We implemented the part where we create the username password authentication token. We pass this token to authentication managers authenticate method, which in turn calls the user detail service. We also implemented the logic to read the user from database and return the user details to the authentication manager. So now this authentication manager verifies our credentials in the background. And if they are matching, it returns us an object called as authentication. That means we have implemented the authentication functionality, but not completely. We still have to create JSON web tokens and send it as a response to the client. So before we create the functionality to create JSON web tokens, we have to add some Maven dependencies. So open up the pom.xml file and make sure you add these three JWT dependencies, the JJWT API, JJWT Impel, and JJWT Jackson. So now let's create a class with the name JWT Provider. I will create this class in a separate package called as security. Let's add the service annotations to this class. And now let's create a method public string generate token. And this method takes an object of type authentication as input. And inside the method, I will type authentication dot get principal. Let's cast it to user object and store it in a variable called as principal. Now we have the user information. We can create our JWT by using the following code. So here we are using the JWTS class to construct our JWT. We set the username as the subject for the JSON web token. And to sign the JSON web token, we should provide a key, which we will implement shortly. Once we provide the subject and sign the JWT, we get the token retained in the form of a string. And now coming to the key, in this example, we will be using asymmetric encryption. That means we will be using a key store to sign the JSON web token, spe specifically the private key of the key store to sign our JSON web token. I'll quickly copy the required code and will explain you how we can use private key to sign the JSON web tokens. All right, now let's go through the code. 
First, we have a field called as key store, and we are initializing this field inside this post construct block, which is goes and inside a method named init. We are providing a key store instance of type JKS to the field, and in the next line, we are getting the input stream from the key store file with the name spring block JKS. This is the key store file I also used for my other tutorial series, build a blog with Spring Boot and Angular. If you're interested, you can also check out the series inside the description section. So once we load the input stream from the key store, you have to provide the input stream to the load method of the key store followed by the password of the key store. And after that, we just have to read the private key from the key store and pass it to the JWTS class to sign our JSON web token. To read the private key, you should mainly provide the alias of the key store followed by the password of the key store. And this particular code throws some many different exceptions. So as a best practice, we are wrapping all those exceptions and just throwing a custom runtime exception with an understandable and meaningful exception message. Now let's call the generate token method of our JWT provider class from inside the auth service. Before that, we have to store the authentication object inside the security context. We can do that by typing security context holder dot get context dot set authentication and to this method and to this method call pass in the authenticate object. So if you want to check if a user is logged in or not, we can just look up the security context for the authenticate object for the authentication object. And if we find the object, then we can be sure that the user is logged in. And if not, the user is not logged in. So now let's inject the JWT provider class inside the auth service and back inside the method we will call the generate token method of the JWT provider. And of course, this method returns a string, which is our authentication token. Now we can send this back. Now we can send this token back to the user. To send this token, we will use a DTO called as authentication response. Let's create this class inside the DTO package. This class contains the fields with name authentication token and the username, both are of type string. So now inside the login method, let's create an object for authentication response, fill that object with our token and the username, and then return it back to the controller. And inside the controller, let's add a written statement to our call to the login method of the auth service and change the written type of the method to authentication response. So now it's time to test whether the login is working or not. But before that, make sure that you have this spring blog.jks file inside the resources folder or else the JWT creation won't work. So now let's start the server and make a login request using postman. So I made the login request using the account I have created before. And you can see that we received the token, the authentication token and username as response back from the server. I hope this video was helpful for you to understand how we can implement authentication mechanism using Spring Security. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel for more interesting tutorials like this. Until then, happy coding.